Hi there everybody. Um, it's me. I haven't done a video in like over a month and it's just been really busy. I've had a lot going on in my personal life with kids and uh, advocacy and stuff like that. So I had um, a lot of videos that I wanted to put together from different conferences that I've been to and I was promising that like in a video from like a month ago. And so now I finally got this one together. This is about the long-term survivors and it's for World AIDS Day. I did one last year too for the long-term survivors. I just like, they're the ones who I want to honor on that day. So um, that video is right after this. I just want to say hi to any of the new people that are on my channel now. I've had a really crazy month. You know, there's lots of videos to look at to see where I've been and what's happened to me over the last two years. And I'm totally fine. A lot of people ask, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're good, and I am, I'm totally fine. There's a lot of questions out there that have come up because of the influx of new subscribers. It's because YouTube's pushing all my videos, so a lot more people are aware of me and what happened. And so I probably need to do another video just about um, questions and answering some really basic questions that are all throughout my videos, but maybe just do one that answers several of the questions that keep coming up over and over again. Everyone loves my dog, it's funny, and the statue dog, I hear that all the time. Finn and um, and my cat Sky. So that's those are always nice comments because um, <laughs> they don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> so in a second, you're gonna see the intro when I was in Florida, and I did have a cold at the time. I filmed it in my hotel room, and I actually filmed it for Facebook because I was there as a social scholar, and they wanted, um, like, basically for us to kind of report every day how the day was for us. So this was from that. Um, I'm in my hotel room filming and um, then it, there's footage after. Watch it. Okay, so thanks again you guys for um, subscribing. I put a video out two years ago um, just trying to find another woman like myself. I never ever intended to have a channel. This has just turned into something that happened very organically and um, so I keep getting messages, so I'm flipping them off my phone so I can see the full screen. So it turned into um, a full uh, YouTube channel, I guess, at this point, but it was never in my intention, so I've just kind of gone with it, sharing my life with what my life is like with HIV. So enjoy, and um, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can in the weeks coming forward. Please watch the video. Again, this is for World AIDS Day. <laughs> Everybody, it is my last night in um, Orlando. I had three amazing days at this conference and learned so much. And um, I just wanted to do a kind of a quick wrap up about my feel about how it all went. First of all, I was here as an NMAX social scholar. No, social media fellow. Sorry, it's a different name for another conference. Um, but kind of the same idea. We went around and we covered the conference and show how others are living with HIV and you know their stories. Storytelling is so important because then people can connect and relate and understand better because this virus needs as much understanding as it can get because there's so much stigma. So it's very helpful to have storytelling. I got to talk to Timothy Ray Brown, who's the only man that's ever been cured of um, HIV. Everybody keeps saying that, you know, how did he get cured? Why can't that happen to us? But, you know, we've gone over how it was with, with him and it was a very extraneous, extraneous, it was a big process and he, he, he's really lucky that he made it through it, but it had to do with having leukemia and, and bone marrow transplant. It's not um, something simple at all or practical. Um, but, you know, I hope that they could learn something from him, of course, but I don't sit there and hold out hope for a cure. We've got to work on what's happening right now. You know, we'll all drive ourselves crazy if we're sitting here just, you know, hoping for a cure constantly. 
I got to talk to Nancy Duncan, who's a long-term survivor. I'll talking to her and hearing her story and the stories of the other long-term survivors, it gives us perspective as newly diagnosed. I'm old enough to know about what happened back in the 80s and 90s, obviously, but um, you know, I didn't live it. I saw it on the news. So hearing the stories again is what really hits home. You envision yourself back then what they had gone through and it's unbearable what they've had to handle. And you just wonder, you know, how, how they've managed to make it to this day, you know, and even just psychologically, emotionally after that, what they've been through. So I feel really honored that I've had the chance to talk to them too. I had a nice walk down from the hotel to dinner with Tez Anderson who runs Let's Kick Ass. Um, it's for AIDS survivor syndrome um, and that's for people that have survived HIV and AIDS for years and years and years and it's um, basically it talks about their mental health and how important they are totally dealing with post-traumatic stress syndrome and it's very it's a very real real condition that needs more focus and money to go towards those people that need that that help and also Mark S. King he's just god he's a, he's a kick in the pants that guy he is funny watch him I mean he's got a YouTube channel my uh, fabulous disease he's a freaking funny guy of HIV sitting right next to me here. They call him the Berlin patient. I've talked about him before. I have pictures taken with him, but I've never sat and talked with him before. He's a vegetarian too. And he lives in California. So, Timothy, tell my friends why you don't have HIV anymore. I had an HIV and uh, um, I had it for 11 years, but then I got really sick and uh, went to a doctor uh, and uh, then he sent me to an oncologist and I was diagnosed with leukemia. Leukemia. Yeah, and, uh, and then I, I did several rounds of chemo and um, after the second one, uh, the main doctor at the university hospital, he, he uh, um, said, I want to uh, send your blood to the um, the donor bank, the cell donor bank. And I'm like, why? And, uh, and he said, well, in case the chemo doesn't work, then we not will have a way to uh, do uh, Right, and yeah. so you are cured of leukemia yeah. and cured of HIV, yeah. and you've been, how long have you been in uh, remission from leukemia? Um, I've been in remission from leukemia for 10 years. 10 years, okay. Um, 11 years uh, since I had HIV. And, uh, 11 years. And I, I quit taking my HIV meds on the day of my transplant, and I'm not taking these tests. I am on prep. You're on prep, okay. Yeah, I'm on prep because I, I screw around a lot, and, and I... I love I, your honesty. <laughs> And I, and it's important to me to uh, to protect myself. Yeah. So prep yeah. is a pill he takes every day to prevent HIV infection. He doesn't need to get it again. He's already had it once. He's the only one to never have it again. So right. it's amazing. Yeah, it's exactly. an honor to sit here with him. This is the Berlin patient, everybody, right here, Timothy Ray Brown. Thank you so much for being on my story tonight. All right. Hopefully you guys can hear this. It's a little loud in here. Okay. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 I call it emotional whiplash. You're gonna live. You're gonna die. You're gonna live. When I was 24 years old, I was living in West Hollywood, and I had my whole life ahead of me, and I was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Anything was possible. But the year was 1985, and the HIV test had just come out, and I took it, and I was positive. I was gonna die. That's when the waiting game began. Waiting for the cough, waiting to see the first spot, waiting for something that told me the countdown has begun and you will be dead in two years. Living life in two year increments is no way for anyone in their 20s to live. But then the 90s happened and they told me, guess what? We have new medications and you're gonna live. Surprise! <laughs> Wait a minute, you mean I went out on disability and sold the life insurance policy and took a trip around the world and ran up my credit card and told the boss to go to hell? And emotionally prepared myself to die and now I'm gonna live? Shit! And now I'm 
frustrated and I'm broke and I haven't worked in years. And I feel guilty because I don't feel grateful. Emotional whiplash. It affected everything. I remember coming down to the breakfast table one morning and sitting across from my partner at the time and saying, you know what? I'm actually going to live a normal lifespan and not with you. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that the person that you're ready to die with may not be the person you are ready to live with. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm lucky. Fate has allowed me to sort through all of this, to recover from the emotional whiplash. And now all those emotions. The confusion and the frustration and the anger and the fear, they come down to just one emotion. Most days, that emotion is gratitude. I'll take it. The year was 1984. I received a phone call from my doctor who said, Mr. Jones, you've got something called GRID, game related immunodeficiency. It was my senior year of college. And while all my classmates were thinking about what wonderful job opportunities they were going to have, I was thinking about what my funeral would look like. I realized that I didn't ask for the shame, I didn't ask for the guilt. At that time, the only thing that I really asked for was death. The year was 1984 and I began partying like it was 1999. <laughs> so when that didn't work, I decided I didn't want to die this ugly death and have my family see me die this ugly death, so I would go to prison. So I got cancer three times, with the worst being stage four cancer, with one lady chained to a hospital bed, I said, God, this is not funny. <laughs> I knew for me to survive and for me to live, I had to stop making other people shit my shit. <laughs> Thank you. 